Hey there, friends and family. Welcome back to Makaripi at Rotorua, put on by RPM Discs. This is the Back Nine coverage, presented by RPM Discs. This is Anthony Rogers, joined by Jake Brennan. Hello, thank you for that introduction, Anthony. Here we go, our Back Nine. What a tight competition from our feature card. Josh Love Parada, Nig One, leading MA1 at this stage. Um, and then from there, it gets a little hairy, a little gets, dicey. Yeah, a little bit hairy. It was a rough front nine, but I think uh, I think we're going to see a few more birdies in the back here. And yeah, I think back nine is far more scorable. Hole ten, par four, 160 meters. One of the nicest holes to play in the country. If you haven't played this hole, come to Rotorua just to play this hole. What you want to do is throw something, and maybe about 80 meters straight, land on the corner part here. Not too far, not too short, and then it gives you a pitch in this tunnel shot here that you're seeing is about 80 meters um, got a guardian tree on the right and the grass is a little bit shorter so um, you mm. can see the basket <laughs> yeah no I think you're you're onto it this Scion nursery we're, we're playing at just has some of the most beautiful trees you'd ever see let alone in New Zealand but really just trying to as you said get 80 meters up the fairway just to where just brightens past that tree in the middle there. Wow. A little low out of the hand, but I think he's gotten past all the all the danger. Get off it. Oh, Simon calling for it to get off it, but I'm lining up those trees. Yeah. He <laughs> said it right there. He's just you'd, you'd think he had a you'd, you'd think he had a mic on him the whole round. Uh, another decent hole to get yourself out left as well. It opens up the gap a little better. I think Paul's going to try and shoot the gap on the right hand side here. That is a tight gap to hit. It is rough. Wow. And she's through. She, 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 she hits it, uh, but she's still going to be under low, low lying branches. Simon didn't quite make it. Taking the smart route. And... What stance is this? Have you. Wow. A little rough there from Dave. Didn't quite have enough room to ante that one. Josh asking for it to get lucky. He'll yeah, be about eight meter, nine meters out of I think he's there. just at the circle's edge actually. Um, he'll have he'll have some long grass to contend with, but uh, all in all, it was relatively good to get uh, to get that far out. You really just want to miss that last tree that you see in the sun there. You got to choose right or left side. Looks like Simon's going to go right at, right inside oh, it. Looks like Simon was going for the basket. That's some heat on it. Mm, I think it was, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, an orange takapu. Great. Great off shot by Paula. Great shot. I think that's probably the fourth shot we've seen Dave throw underneath a tree. Just he loves it. <laughs> He's getting amongst <laughs> it. Very graceful little up there. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe oh, about, Josh, about eight, seven or eight meters. An uncharacteristic of Sai as well. Even though he had some foliage in his line, just. These baskets are not nasty. quite his day. Uh, they are relatively notorious for spinning. These are some early generation baskets, but um, Simon Feezy's actually put together a give a little page as well to try and um, spruce up the, the rotor row course. So yep. new tea pads, new baskets. Yeah, we got a couple new baskets in this, this round as well. Uh, hole 11, 83 meters. Um, again, tight gap, but you really just want to you want to hit about 70 meters and die. Um, you don't really want you don't really need to to hyzer out much. Just a straight throw will do. Um, Kia, uh, great pick on this Takapu, something of the sort like that. So I felt on this course, 
it had zero skip it had just been raining grass was a little bit long and there was wherever you threw the disc it would just stop yeah i just think that was a missed throw from josh i don't, I don't think he intended to throw it that that <laughs> short but so, I, I certainly do, not <laughs> i do i do i do understand what you're all about Let's see if simon can show us the route yeah it's a little deep again looks like he probably went with a, with a, a katuku um there you go, Dave. I like that. I like that. great I shot from dave look at this under the bucket you've got a feeling that's going to be at least one birdie mm. josh swinging it out wide something cool. stable but he's going to be back there in the foliage with simon Paula to throw across the lake um, yeah, I think that this was actually an out of bounds little bog. Um, oh, bang, bang. Isn't that the case? The stellar putts are generally for par. Hmm. We showed Simon how to do it. Just once again, low. swallow as Paula pulls the sweat off her brow and knocks that one down yeah good job Dave and don't forget to subscribe to T-Box Media bash that like button for us he's doing great Paul's doing great things and deserves your guys' patronage hole 12 par 3 112 meters really tricky hole to get so what you want to do is you want to push straight for about 90 meters something that maybe starts on hyzer pops up a little bit hits the corner and then finishes with a bit of a flare skip in towards the basket this green could possibly be the nicest green in new zealand to play on just beautiful big trees and yeah, yeah it's oh, I've, so I've, nice heard, I've heard it called the cathedral hall quite a few times just to the extent that yeah once you get to the green itself you're just surrounded by 10 huge sequoia it's just beautiful bit of incentive for our players to make the green then let's see if Sai can flip up that pekka pekka just right oh nice where is that uh yeah so um spoiler alert about where you are around three um but yeah he just hit that right hand gap um and made it all the way towards the back inside so he'll be just outside circle dave playing the skip in towards the basket great upshot dave well done if you don't have touch get a berg bit of a joke we've got the park rangers yes, we love our bergs everyone in the the north island is getting <laughs> bergs these days the, the the hot disc apparently one of the most sold discs in 2022 mm. you might want to fact check me on that i don't actually know that i just, <laughs> I just heard it on some show so i'm good we'll, we'll believe you. we'll run with yeah, it for this we'll for this round anyway <laughs> and then if someone wants to nerd out they're welcome to to tell me later Paula, a graceful little run there. So here's Sai, once again, about 12 meters on the backside. You got the height right. Ooh. Oh, Josh, putting again. Good pass save. Yeah, now it's just coming out great for him. He's got that great arc. It's coming out just above the basket, not coming out with too much heat. Yeah, and just going to back to Box Media me. here and uh, on subscribers, Paul is at about 600 uh, subscribers, which I think is personally insane for the level of coverage that he puts out. Like the stuff that he's putting here is just, it's, it's well beyond 600 subscribers worth. And I think if we can just get a few more people hitting subscribe, he wants to get to a thousand subscribers um, fairly soon. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Come on, you South Islanders, step up and uh, and do it. I mean, let's make it happen. Yeah, 
I mean, I, I classify myself as starting disc golf in the dirty dunners. So, <laughs> so yeah, so support everyone. Just, just, yeah, get behind it. You don't lose. Another beautiful hole, hole 13 here. Uh, another par four. Um, 130 meters. You really just want to miss this ponga on the left-hand side and finish on the right-hand side of the fairway. So I wouldn't say you necessarily, unless you're trying to, uh, to chew off the hole for a, uh, for a two, that you want to throw anything with some stability. I think you want to end up on that right-hand side. So flip something up. I think um, you know, Kahu XG or something of the sort like that, um, just to end up on the right-hand side. Dave tries to kill Yvette because she's out there spotting for us, but she gives us a thumbs up. So Even there, I feel like that's a great place for Dave. He's still got a he's still got a shot into the green. I love this play, the forehand, as long as he doesn't go deep. Yeah, unfortunately, he threw it a little high and a bit too much on Heiser. Let's see if Simon can get it right. Wow. Yeah. And those XGs are just stunning. <laughs> and he gets rewarded to stand in a puddle. Yeah, well, I think he'll be able to, to take relief from that water himself. So he'll be pretty mint. But he'll have a go at a two. Again, having two RPM players on this, uh, on this coverage as well. An RPM sponsored event, you know, RPM definitely doesn't... Um, give themselves enough credit for creating some amazing plastic and putting on, you know, fantastic events all over the country. Um, just want to make sure they get their due. Um, really think that more Kiwis should be on board with throwing Kiwi plastic. It's, it's getting amazingly consistent reviews. Yeah, I agree. My, one of my favorite discs is actually the Kutuku. I, I think in terms of the overstable mid-range spot, it's 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 a must-have in the bag. Certainly, I mean you can have one at, in, in three different plastics, um, and and it fill all your mid-range spots. Um, you know, I've been an ambassador of theirs for about five years now, and um, they're just pulling more and more spots for my bag. Um, you know, I'm trying to get as much of the bag as possible this year. Once I get back on the course, we'll see how we get on. Yeah. Mr. Rogers, an, an RPM sponsored player, if you can't tell. Mm. Loving the plastic. Simon for the eagle. Oh, oh, so close, Simon. Just off the rim. That Simon hasn't got a birdie yet. That could be could have been his first uh, birdie. It could have been an eagle. So that again, for newer players, this is another intelligent move from Josh. He wanted to make sure that um, he had a. He had everybody on board with whether or not he was in or out. He was indeed out, and he smashes it. Yes. So, you know, it was good on him for, for taking his time. Look at the winner lad, running it in. Hitting the jump of a team winner. Nice one, Josh. Smash, bro. Great pop, Paul. Oh, oh, Dave. Unlucky from Dave. It's really one of the only spit outs you feel like he's had most of the day. Did they go through the chains? Yeah, again, for, for, so these first generation baskets, you really got to be on close to the center pole, but. Still a huge smile on his face. He's having a great time. Right eh? under Simon, first birdie. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Here we go. Hole 14. I think it speaks for itself. There is a line of tunnels, and once again, just throw straight, straight down the middle. Um, danger with this hole, hitting an early tree and kicking out right, kicking out left. Um, yeah, that's where the basket is. Yeah. So we made a decision this year to. Um, to get it on this side of the path just because there's heaps of walkers. Great shot, Josh. Oh, just throwing that flip up forehand. That is so hard to do. Um, 
quite a few walkers use the path that's just just behind them so um, took the original pin position moved it back another 10 meters um, took ourselves to the other side of the path so that we would have likely more ability to be able to throw but this day I think was a little less as far as spectators and and dog walkers and friends in the park but so Simon Dave and Paul are showing you how most people play the hole by hitting a tree. <laughs> Great second shot there, though. There's something tells me in uh, in some of our secondary coverages that we might see some alternative routes on this hole. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? We shall see. Paula taking her time. Just a graceful throw there. So it would be just outside of circle two, but. How nice is the course though? The amount of shots and different kind of angles and that it makes you throw, I feel like you use a full bag when you play this course. It's not just a hyzer chip and putt course. Yeah. It, um, you definitely need to use mid ranges, putters, drivers, everything is used, stable, understable. Another great oh, putt. There's not many birdies. Around. Another great putt from Josh. He's been on a good tear here. That moves him to three down, well clear, leading the way. Ma one. Even even the field overall, I think he's right up there. He could be second or third overall at this stage. I think. Yeah, I believe Jackson might have uh, might be having a tear on the the lead car, but on MPO, but yep. definitely um, for Ma one. Josh Love Parada doing the business doing the business to get back to your comment though no certainly uh this this course makes you throw every shot in the book um and you don't really replicate many shots over and over as well so on to hole 15 94 meters i've seen everything from thumbers to forehands to rollers to backhand flex shots there's a flex line from the left to right hand side and coming right back out hyzering in um yeah dealer's choice on this hole yeah the secret to this one is just really getting it close to the basket anthony <laughs> it must be the john madden of disc golf eh? yeah <laughs> just throw it well oh <laughs> mr joel way on the camera making the duck yeah on uh on most uh on most holes it's a good thing to turn the cameraman i th think that uh josh would have reckoned he, he he wouldn't have wanted to turn him on this one speaking of turning simon turning into no man's land paula rocking the floppy hat i like the line get lucky through the trees yeah that sort of anti flex you know what i mean like i think that's a it's a great line she could even be CTP at the moment. I'm pretty sure she is. That punches mm. through. Save will probably be about 20, 20 out. Oh no, they've called pull her out. Mm. Oh. I've seen her do that shot a couple of times now where she just leaves herself, maybe circles edge 12, 13 meters for the putt maybe just giving it a little bit more and yeah well she's close. she's definitely got herself a bit um patent pending and lacking in the overall ability to be able to oh as josh draws a bit more metal there the kid's on at the moment because someone wasn't as bad as we thought he might have gotten kicked back to the left I guess no one really took my advice and just put it close to the basket. They all, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> no, a very hard hole to get, I think. Like, I mean, you've got to get a little bit lucky through the trees or you've got to have a very good forehand or a good thumber or, or yeah. something. You've got to have Henry, something. Henry throwing thumber on this park net. Here we go, hole 16, 91 meters. I feel personally like it plays a little bit longer. Uh, the tree's straight ahead. You can see the pin straight down the gap. However, most players are gonna try and bring something out slightly to the right and have a hyzer in. There's a little bit more of an open open fairway towards the right. Everyone but Josh. Everyone, but when you've got that forehand, why not? Yeah, I mean, if we didn't have you on about this one, um, I necessarily would have 
queried his um, his thought process within throwing that, but um, then asked him afterwards. He felt like he could, even with the forehand, get something to go further forward. So hmm. um, Simon showing us that conventional get, and that's I think that's the safe miss out that side. He should have a a pretty easy pitch in. Yeah, as Simon was saying, the um, the old basket was a little further right. Um, they've moved the new one a little further left. Paula gets past that first line of soldier trees there. Oh, and he gets around it. Again, the old basket there getting retired. Um, new one from RPM just made its way down for the tournament. Is it Simon for two? Yep. And oh, it bangs it. Looks like a one on camera. No yeah. way. We got one on camera. <laughs> what was that? Was that circle three? Circle two? Uh, yeah, I think it would have been edge of circle two. It was, yeah. We'll say circle three. Just yeah, we'll give, circle we'll three it is. <laughs> yeah. No, it doesn't really matter. Run it, it in, Simon. Run it in. It was from a good long while away. Um, and he gets the replay doesn't know that he, he doesn't even know that he birdied a few holes back but oh, yeah. Tui time like as they say Josh not to be big putted unlucky there just face masked Paul great par save To get par from where Dave was, that is outstanding. It was awesome. Yeah, that honestly. is to hit the first available and Heiser out and then get it. That's a that's a birdie in my mind. Hole 17. This one ate people's lunch over the weekend. Um, I think it probably would have played one of the hardest um, to par. And yeah, 182. You really want to push something out. Um, most folks take the, the right hand gap just because the left hand side is a little harder to flip up to get max distance. Um, so you'll see most taking that right hand side over there. Um, yeah, no one's taking the left hand gap. That thing is tight. And Simon well, just does. As Simon just does, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to get asked to bear on this commentary. <laughs> No, honestly, there, there aren't many who wanted to take it just because it definitely was um, the skinnier of the two gaps. And Josh takes it as well. Yeah, with the forehand, but... This is why everyone was taking big numbers on it. They were taking the left gap. <laughs> well, I think Dave was trying to take the right gap there. It gets a, gets a decent rollout. That'll help him. I believe Paul's throwing a, a, another Pekka. Might be stunned by that last tree there. Yeah, it's a tough hole to throw something with power low and knowing that it's not going to skip when it hits the ground. Mm. It's um, pretty pretty fine gap to hit. And then you've got to make your way through these. So I would have liked to have seen Josh try and take a gap a little further to the right of those four guardians you see there. Um, he might have been trying to do that and just early released, but um, he's going to put himself into the left hand side. And <clears throat> Paula, as we were just talking about, takes that right hand side. I think she's going to enjoy it over there a bit more. Oh, Simon going deep. Ooh. Unlucky there, Dave. Many people have hit that tree before. Yeah, 
Uh, was Josh playing a little bit quick there, or? Yeah, again, like I said, we we had a yawn about that uh, forehand of uh, of his. He was looking at a few different angles to try and throw that. Um, again, I think that um, I could have purposely tried to say, "Hey, you know, take a bit more time and and really know exactly what you want to do." Um, you know, I'll take the uh, I'll take the blame because I was on the bag. But he's had a great round to date, so he um, he's unfortunately going to take a big number on this one. But oh, Simon off the cage. He's had about three or four that have missed low, and I just wonder if that played in his mind, and, and he said, "I'm not going to miss low." And... Yeah, it was a great putt there. Josh played so well. Up until 17. Pa's still a good good um, score on this whole. I mean, oh, certainly. I like I said, I would uh, not looking at the numbers, but I don't think that it uh, it got birdied very often. And here we are, hole 18. Another par four. Uh, Mando on the left hand side just to make sure that nobody's playing cheating down the road um, I don't think I think the baskets even further from the basket you can see there um, further back here um, just want to get yourself up to where those Mando the Mando is um, straight shot uh, left to right um, and even being on the right hand side is best to try and get yourself around the corner so you've got either a forehand or a chip shot on your right. Such a good par four, just a, a hole that requires a little bit of distance but mostly placement. I love this hole. And that's uh, Marky Sun's work in the background there to make sure that nobody's playing to the old basket to the right hand side. See, great shot from Dave, not trying to do too much, just gets himself out there. A rip oh, from smash from Paula. Paula. Hey. Whoa. Bit of headwind on this one. I think that might have just flipped up. It probably was a nuke. Um, be on the left hand side. It'll be a little closer to the Mando than he'd like, but should be able to navigate it. I think you're either looking for magic or par when you're on when you go a little bit left. Yeah. I think Paula could do well to just throw at that other basket just to get herself around the corner. Great. Okay. So Paula one or two FBO players here in Mish are battling that. So it'll be interesting to see how Mish has finishes at the end of the round. Simon waiting wow. to throw another forehand, but beautiful Katari there. As he said, not bad. Gets himself uh, a look at the birdie. Yeah. And Josh goes deep. Yeah, you know deep that forehand prowess, man. What an issue to have. Too much power on your forehand. <laughs> I wonder what that feels like. Just a great shot from Dave again. You know, he might have a colorful scorecard, but I, I think that Dave would have enjoyed this round heaps. Playing on coverage, playing with three other amazing competitors. Paula as well, you know, always has a smile on her face. And Simon will finish the day as it, as it began, just Another spit out. That's a few putts Simon would have missed. He easily could be three or four down by now. Just, just a different day, really, isn't it? Well, yet again, just an amazing park to, to play disc golf at. I'm so glad that I came down even just to spectate for the weekend. Um, some great camaraderie there. Um, 
just yet. How'd your round go? Did you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, I love this round. Um, good weather, wasn't raining, not too windy, the tree shouted everything, and I had a really good card for, for my, my round there. And well, that's it. Hot round, surprise, surprise, Jackson. Yeah, Mario uh, right on his tail. Um, in, the, in the booth here, Jake Brennan sitting third. Shout out Luke Hempel, MA2, coming up with a need three. Wow. Also, to shout out a few more folks, Narimu um, from uh, just outside of Saupo. Uh, one of his first tournaments already throwing under par at one of the hardest courses in the North Island. So, good on you. We look forward to seeing you in, in another round. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, thank you.